Hello everyone and welcome to a short video on a plane in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and this time we have the 727-200 from Boeing and the 727-200 is a little bit longer than 727-100 and I decided that this one just sort of looked better but I have had an interesting problem with it in that the center of lift isn't close enough to the center of mass. The center of mass ought to be right here. It is in the correct position I can tell because of where the landing gear is on the plane and the landing gear is here so the center of mass is just a little bit forward from that otherwise the plane will have trouble rotating. Uh, so we know where the center of mass is but the center of lift needs to be closer to that uh, for the plane to fly properly and it just isn't there. It's too far away. I've done many shenanigans to try and get it for long but since I can't redesign the plane I, I don't really have an option of like putting canards on the front or something. A big problem is the horizontal stabilizer and if I take that off right now, you'll see it, it has a huge effect on the position of the center of lift. Unfortunately, uh, no particular way I've tried to attach that has made it any better. Uh, I've tried using B9 procedural wings. That, that more or less just made it worse. Uh, these are, of course, the stock parts. And these stock parts uh, sort of fit the bill. At least they don't do have as much of an impact on the center of lift as the V9 procedural wings did. And actually I've made them a little bit smaller compared to the real thing uh, in this direction, the cord. Uh, as far as their span, I think uh, is, it's about right. I've tried my best to make the wings as they are, but the center of lift doesn't really respect the wing thickness and that might be an issue. There are also a lot of uh, more curious aerodynamic effects that aren't being reflected even though we have ferrum aerospace research and it's pretty darn good at figuring this out. I mean this isn't an aerodynamic uh, disaster or anything mind you. It's just that if you note, uh, let's see, at 100 meters per second we need a ridiculous angle of attack to try and take off is the problem. So yeah that is, that is where we have our problem right now. And of course we can't have a ridiculous angle of attack, not with this engine here. Oh, you'll note that there are four engines it looks like, but there are really only three. That's because I wanted the same intake on this one, so I had to put a dummy engine here. And so this engine is thrust limited to zero and won't do anything. But that's because I wanted the same look for the front of it as with these. And of course we have one smushed in the back there. Okay, well, anyway, we'll try and fly it, I think. Uh, yeah, oh, by the way, we do have passenger space, even though these are little windows. I've I put uh, passenger cabins inside, if you're wondering. Uh, S2 crew tanks. It doesn't have quite the passenger space of the real thing, uh, but it's got enough. And certainly the mass is correct. I, I put as much passenger space inside as I could, given the dry mass of the vehicle. But right now, in order to get off the ground, we're only fueled to one quarter of our fuel capacity. So that's why it's it, it doesn't have much fuel in or much time on its engines. And we would like to change that. Uh, if you have a practical suggestion for how, even these little things, uh, you'll know, I, I did, uh, I made these uh, specifically to improve the center of lift, to move it forward a little bit. Yeah, I've been doing little hijinks. Uh, of course they don't look like exactly like the real thing but that's because they're all moving wings to add more lift to the vehicle anyway uh, so yeah you can uh, give me your suggestions for how to fix this problem let's see how it flies right now and let me check that yeah we're on the shuttle runway alright well we seem to be rather bouncy on the runway right now that doesn't instill me with a great deal of faith here especially since we're tending off to the left side Hmm. Okay. Right. Anyway, uh, flaps down. And, well, let's see what happens. We're going to use nose wheel steering to try and get this proper. Okay. So I have to take it in this view because I don't want to scrape off the tail. But we, we, we can rotate easily. It's that we can't get off the ground at the speed that we ought to. 
So I'll, I'll keep it rotated. Okay, there we go. So you can see that we basically lifted off at close to 200 knots, which is much faster than we ought to with, you know, flaps. The flaps are somewhat down here, you can see. But anyway, let's lift the flaps up. The nice thing about using the all-moving wings for these parts is that they actually move with the flaps. Not the greatest thing I know, but uh, it's it's a start. This could probably get off the runway with uh, half its fuel load, or even its full fuel load if you go fast enough. Half of its fuel load it probably takes until about 105 meters per second, something like that. Anyway, let's try and get it to its cruising altitude and speed and make sure that's alright. We shouldn't need full power for climbing, really. Actually, maybe we should land somewhere in the middle. Maybe uh, land at Washington or something. Somewhere to establish a new airport. I like establishing airports. So far, we've got... Uh, we've got SFO, we've got Edwards Air Force Base. We've got Detroit Metro, we've got JFK, we've got Cape Canaveral, and we've got Heathrow. If, I don't know if it's going to show up or not. I don't know why the others have an icon, but Heathrow doesn't. So, just some stats for you. Um, this variant of the 727 had a range of 1,900 nautical miles, so if we carried our fuel, full fuel load, that's our range, in theory. Uh, the maximum velocity we're expecting is point nine, Mach 0.9, which is uh, 519 knots. We'll be trying to cruise at a Mach 0.86. Our service ceiling is 11 kilometers in height. These are the correct engines, by the way, the exact correct engines. They're JT8Ds. Actually, I, uh, I don't think it's actually the 219 variants. I, I say exact, but it's not, I don't know if there's the exact exact. Um, on the 727s is JT8D 7 or 9 or 11. But pretty darn close. I should probably make these a little bit shorter and less pointy. These are procedural wings also to make that shape up there and probably could do a better job with that. Well, it says estimated endurance is 3 hours and estimated range is 2,800 kilometers. I don't know what it's basing that off of right now. That's sort of surprising. Okay, so basically at 10 kilometers, Mach 0.86 and this says 2 hours worth of estimated endurance on our current fuel. Uh, this says 56 minutes. Considering we're only carrying a quarter of a fuel load, that's still pretty good. We are now in a very airliner-ish cruise. Alright everyone, we've been flying for an hour now, and so Mechjeb was probably incorrect about our current throttle stage time, and far was correct and it says we still have an hour left and I think it's probably it might be right about that it's actually probably a little bit less than an hour considering we're using one kerosene per second and we have 2,500 of it so maybe half an hour really um, really uh, looking at that it makes it look like Mechjeb is correct but it was obviously incorrect before because I don't think it ever said we had an hour of fuel but here we are having flown for an hour so Yep, it's, it's tough to say. But anyway, the point is, it's been very stable. We made a course correction, uh, but basically it's been sticking around 10 kilometers. Uh, it drifted a little bit lower, and then uh, it's been drifting higher since I actually turned. And what I've decided to do is uh, found a new airport at Norfolk. So we're going to establish KORF, which is Norfolk International Airport, uh, right here. And I think it's time to start descending. So we've covered quite a distance, and you go, I flew an hour in uh, in Kerbal Space Program? Yes. Uh, well, of course, I'm used to flying much longer times in flight simulators, like Microsoft Flight Simulator and X-Plane, so this is, this is trivial. Uh, we have flown our 727 
admirably. I have to say that it, it is annoying that its snout is a little bit small. I mean, uh, the 727 should have a longer front portion, but I can't really do that without like modeling a new part or something like that. So we have to deal with this look for now. So, but its front end definitely does not look quite right. And actually, if you take a look, it, the slope of the end of it here, it doesn't end at a, a smoothly into a cylinder. It sort of ends sharply. It still has an upward slope, and so it doesn't mesh well with the with the cylindrical body of it. Those minor irritations always get me. Anyway, uh, I don't know if I can land this on the on the terrain without uh, you know a proper runway or anything, but we'll see, and we'll try and put an airport there with Kerbal constructs. I won't show the putting the airport part, but I will show the landing. So time to descend. So throttle down. Okay, we are approaching Norfolk, Virginia. That's here. Newport News is across the bay from it, and. This looks like an airport texture right here. That's close enough to where the airport actually is uh, that I might want to just uh, establish Norfolk International Airport right there. Would be most convenient. Um, we're pretty low right now though because I've been descending like an airliner does. And unfortunately there aren't exactly airport lights at that location. So it might be a little bit difficult for me to land. Also I didn't put spoilers on here, which I should have done. Interesting point, uh, spoilers on the wings don't just handle slowing down, they also help uh, with turns because since the ailerons are on the outboard when you roll, uh, they tend to twist the wings a bit if you don't have something else counteracting that and so the spoilers counteract that during a roll. So you'll see whenever the airliner rolls the spoilers also come up uh, to make sure that uh, the forces do not like twist the wings too badly. But you can see right now, I've, I've basically shut down the engines. There is, uh, well, there is a trivial amount of thrust coming from the engines, but that's correct. They're on idle, and and yeah, we're we're not slowing down that much, and we're still we're descending very moderately. Well, I'm trying to judge my landing from this, and it's not the greatest thing to work off of, and. As it is, I'm not really leaving that much room for the landing. I can't really see where the heck the runways are from the terrain. We are going fairly slowly now. Well, about, let's say, 260 miles an hour. Actually, I probably don't even need to run the engines now. But I'm going to have to start turning. And we probably don't have that much room before the runway texture, there's no actual runway there. Let's get the gear down. And again, because our center of lift is out of whack, we probably have a higher stall speed than we ought to. Well, we're coming in a little bit fast. A lot fast, actually. Really would like it to go down now though. We gotta run out of land. Okay, I think we're technically on the ground and rolling. I don't know how much land we have left. I'll try and turn it off to one side without crashing it into something. Well, uh, we're, we're over here somewhere. There appear to be buildings. This is probably not part of the airport. It looks like... I mean, of course, it's not configured like the real airport. It's just a random texture that was placed here. Uh, though, perhaps not completely random. It's uh, convenient that they actually put a airport... They tend to seem to have an airport texture close to the real airport, so it's maybe not so random. But the terminal is always, obviously over here, and this is some poor guy's farm. But, uh, well, we're here now, and we actually crossed a road of some kind. But we are parked, and so 727-200 flight from 
Uh, oh, I was missing the window. Okay, the miss the windows are there. Okay, yes, seven twenty seven dash two hundred flight from Cape Canaveral to Norfolk, Virginia, complete and successful, and everything is good. So there you are. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.